In a previous video, I showed you this, the Ender 3 S1, and my biggest complaint was no high temperature hot end. Introduce the Ender 3 S1 Pro with a 300 degree hot end and a few other changes which didn't exactly work well for me. I'll explain it all on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. The Ender 3 S1 Pro used in this video was donated by Pergear for my honest and unbiased opinion. So what's the difference between the S1 and the S1 Pro? Well, there's several things, but there's three major items. But first, the little things. This one has a handle on the bed, so it's easy to pull the bed out. It's nice. This one doesn't have it. This has a light bar to shine light down in your prints. Nothing here. This one has ball bearings in this spool holder, so it spins. This one's fixed. And the final thing that this has is a bezel where this is covered in a plastic case with a bigger drawer so it's nicer looking. But the three biggies are number one, the hot end. Now they're both direct drive, but there's still a PTFE tubing inside this that goes all the way to the nozzle. So realistically, that limits you to 230 to 235 degrees C before that PTFE tubing starts to break down and you don't want that. This has an actual metal heat break in there. So the PTFE tubing that is in there doesn't touch the hot end or doesn't touch the hot zone. It's similar to the heat break I put on my Ender 3 V2 from Slice Engineering. That thing works great. So I definitely like this. That was my biggest complaint about the S1 is that PTFE touching the nozzle. The second thing they did was they put a PEI surface on the metal plate where this has a PC surface on a metal plate. I'll explain why I like this better further in the video. The final difference is the LCD display. This one is the same as the V2. It's got to turn the knob and click, same menu, everything. This one has the Creality touchscreen. Now the touch works fine, but the interface, it's just horrible. It's absolutely the worst interface I've used on any 3D printer. It's so confusing to me. Maybe it's just me, but it's so confusing. There's one point, it says home on the main screen. You click home, that just takes you back to the main screen. You got to go one level deep to get to the button to actually home this thing. There's an X and Y home and there's a Z home. If you click on the X and Y home symbol, it homes the X and the Y. But if you click on the Z home, it'll home the X, the Y, and the Z, which is the true home. So there's like three different homes on this thing. And I don't know how many times I pressed home thinking I'm homing the bed or homing this thing. And all I did was take it back to the main screen. So incredibly confusing. So that's something I hope can be fixed with firmware. But let me explain how to put this thing together and then show you how well it prints. The printer comes mostly assembled and on their SD card there is a great video that shows you how to put it together. The LCD is mounted with three screws, connect the wiring, then connect the gantry with four screws through the base, then mount the hot end, then mount the spool holder, connect the filament runout, and then the rest of the wiring. The connectors are nicely keyed so you don't get them in the wrong spot and they go in the right way. There's a ribbon cable that goes to the hot end, makes this much easier to assemble. And then once you've got everything assembled, make sure it's set to 115 volts in the US, plug it in, turn it on, and now we're ready to use the auto level. In the settings menu, you go into the level menu and then auto level, and it'll do a 16 point level, but mine gave me this error. As it turns out, that error message means the bed's too much of an angle, auto level can't work. So you need to level your bed, before you auto level your bed. So I got out my Filament Friday E-Leveler, ran the G-code for this guy, which ran great on this. I leveled each corner, then I re-ran the auto level and it passed. Once it was leveled, the first print I did was the 3D Benchy that they have pre-sliced on their SD card. Now I had also received some Creality Filament, Ender Series Creality Filament. I don't know who sent me this, but it's a silver, so I thought what a perfect filament to try out. Ender Filament on an Ender 3. And that first print is awful. So I don't know what the cause was. Was it the filament? Was it machine? Was it the slicing? So I printed another sample, which is this coin. It says Ender on one side. It's got like the Bitcoin symbol on the other. And it printed pretty nice. So then they have a cat on there, and I printed the cat. And about two-thirds of the way through, I shut off power. Purposely shut off power to see if power loss recovery would work. It did. I turned it back on. It said, do you want to continue? So it did, but you can see a nice line all the way through this thing, 
where it recovered. And the rest of the print came out pretty nice. So then I went back, printed another Benchy. It's awful. So at that point I figured it's not the filament, it's not the machine, it's probably the slicing of that Benchy. So I went to the computer, grabbed a 3D Benchy file, sliced it with my Filament Friday Extra Fast Profile in version 5 of Cura at a 25% infill. It only took 45 minutes to print this and it came out really nice. There's just a little bit of stringing. I did change the retraction from 6 millimeters down to 1 millimeter because this is direct drive. So I did get a little bit of stringing but this is so much cleaner than those. So it had to be the slicer. So then I wanted to test a chep cube at a 0.12 layer height, so really fine detail with a smooth top, and this would not stick to that PEI bed, not consistently. I got a bunch of stringing, I got a bunch of failures, I'd come back, just would not stick. I cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol, I even roughed it up a little bit, which helped a little, but I couldn't get a complete chep cube from this machine. I tried different filament, same results. So I decided to make a change. I went to the S1, which has a PC finish on a metal plate. Same magnet, so I just swapped beds, and then I could print one no problem. I printed in the red, I printed in black, no problem at all with this bed material. But that PEI, totally inconsistent. It definitely would not print a small chep cube. Larger prints with a bigger footprint, not too bad. This guy right here, which is like a chisel, about the size of a chep cube, it popped off several times. So this bed material, this PEI bed material, to me is a step backwards from what the S1 had. So then I wanted to try some other filaments. I did print a few more PLA prints with my Filament Friday red filament, which we no longer sell, but I still have some that I use. Printed nicely, so the machine, the settings, my slicing was working good. So then I tried my uh, TPU profile in version 5.0 of Cura, and I printed this little spiralized vase. Actually, I printed a couple of them. Beautiful. Came out nice, no issues whatsoever. So then I wanted to print some high temperature stuff, and I've had this Tallman 3D Alloy 910. It's a nylon based high temperature filament takes like 260 to 270 degrees to print with this and I printed a chisel and I actually pounded, actually I printed a couple of them, I pounded that chisel into wood and actually split a piece of wood with it and it didn't break. So it handled that beautifully, the high temperature were good. The only issue I had was getting this footprint to stick to that bed. I actually ended up flipping this over and putting glue on it, putting glue stick and then I got this to work. So my biggest complaint about this printer is this PEI bed. It's horrible. Overall, the S1 and the S1 Pro are your direct drive Ender 3s. If you want a direct drive, these are two of your choices. For about $430, and this one's about $500. Depending on where you buy it, you can get it for a little bit less. But Pergear has it on Amazon for $499. It's a good machine. I just don't like the PEI bed and I don't like the touch screen. I'd prefer this. So the nice thing is, is you can buy just that hot end, that Sprite hot end, for about $90 and then you can upgrade this. The only issue I have is I can't find the firmware in order to do this, you know, to upgrade the temperature limits in the firmware. So once I get that, I'm actually going to try and install this on an Ender 3 Pro, just a regular Ender 3 Pro to see if I can get it to work. So look for that in the future. So you can upgrade this guy once the firmware is available. Cost you a little bit more, but then you get your display, you get your PC bed if you like that like me. If you want the PEI, if you want the touchscreen, this is actually a better deal. So I don't know, your choice. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon's one way. If nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time, right here. The film of Friday.